single frame. At 12 million miles, Jupiter's clouds of gases and ice particles are seen to swirl and twist in strange new patterns invisible from Earth. From a series of more than 4,000 photographs, a time-lapse movie is made that covers 10 Jovian days. The atmosphere is more complex than had been thought. The trajectories of Voyagers 1 and 2 enable the spacecraft to obtain photographs which provide different aspects of each of the four Galilean moons. Europa, the size of our moon, resembles a cracked billiard ball. But the complex markings are curiously flat, like stripes painted on the surface. Its icy crust is thought to float on an ocean melted by interior heat. Io is the most spectacular of the Jovian moons. Its vivid, mottled surface with oddly shaped blotches of color mystify the scientists. Surely the strangest object ever seen in our solar system. Ganymede is as large as the planet Mercury. Its dark, ancient terrain is spotted with white impact scars. Adjacent areas are cut by jumbled patterns of grooves and ridges. Callisto is the outermost of the four large moons. Every inch of its surface bears the scars of billions of years of cratering. Two scientific discoveries occur during the first flyby of Jupiter. On March 4, 1979, Voyager 1's cameras photograph a faint ring of particles surrounding Jupiter. Several months later, Voyager 2 photographs the dark side of Jupiter. Backlighting by the sun produces a spectacular view of the ring. It is ribbon-like, 3,600 miles wide. Jupiter now joins Saturn and Uranus to become the third planet known to possess a ring system. A second discovery solves the mysteries of Io's bizarre surface. On March 8, 1979, Voyager 1 takes a remarkable photograph of Io. During a routine study of optical navigation, an engineer sees what at first appears to be a crescent cloud. Scientists soon realize that it can only be a volcanic plume erupting from Io a huge fountain of molten sulfur, gas, and bits of rock surging upward against the moon's weak gravity. A re-examination of Io photographs reveals other active volcanoes. It's the first seen beyond Earth. If we could obtain closer views of some of the Galilean moons, each would present a strikingly different surface. Through an artist's rendering, we approach Callisto, the moon most distant from Jupiter. Its surface is saturated with craters dating back to a torrential bombardment period four billion years ago. Although this is a dead world, its craters, for the scientist, are a record of the past history of the Jovian system. A great cataclysmic impact basin extends for a thousand miles. Since Callisto is half water ice, the basin, unable to hold its shape, slowly slumped back into the moon's crust until only traces of the surrounding ridges remain. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. Long parallel ridges and valleys form chaotic crisscrossing patterns created by cracking and shifting of the crust. This grooved terrain borders on regions of ancient surface, vast brown ice fields covered with the remnants of impact craters. Jupiter fills the sky when viewed from the surface of Io the innermost and smallest of the Galilean moons. Its bizarre colored surface is an ever-changing pattern of the vivid reds and yellows of frozen sulfur.
Scattered across the surface are the vents of inactive volcanoes. Many of the calderas are dark in color, filled with lakes of frozen black sulfur. In the distance is an active volcano. It erupts, spewing hot sulfur and gas 200 miles above the surface and falling back in a plume that spreads over a distance of 600 miles. No impact craters are visible on Io because constant eruptions resurface the moon with sulfur and bits of rock. Surface flows that originate in dark volcanic centers spread to fan shapes about 60 miles across or leave long snake-like patterns. In the polar region are mountains several miles in height and regions that appear to be made of stacked layers of material. These cliffs are created by constant erosion from liquid sulfur compounds escaping from underground and leaving snow white patches. Jupiter has a huge magnetic field. The field would expand symmetrically in all directions if it were not impacted by the solar wind, a streaming flow of particles from the sun. A bow shock is created where the solar wind meets the magnetic field. Behind the bow shock, the field is warped and turned inward upon itself by the pressure of the wind. It is formed into a long tail that extends half a billion miles to the orbit of Saturn. As Io moves in its orbit around Jupiter, it creates a unique relationship with the planet's magnetic field. In this polar view, Jupiter, spinning on its axis every ten and a half hours, drags its magnetic field and trapped radiation with it. But Io's orbit is slower, 43 hours. As a result, clouds of trapped radiation in the magnetic field sweep past Io and strip away one ton of sulfur and oxygen atoms each second into space. These atoms form a torus, a huge ring of electrically charged particles trapped by the magnetic field. An electrical current of three million amperes flows along magnetic field lines linking moon and planet. Torus material flattens the magnetic field and flows away from Jupiter to create the current sheet, a thin sheet of charged particles which distorts the field near the magnetic equator. The Voyager scientists had been saturated with surprises at Jupiter, and they approached Saturn with cautious, open minds. computer-generated film, Voyager is shown as it arrives at Saturn after a journey from Earth of four years and a billion miles. The planet's rings are targeted for special study. They present the first of many surprises. In this hypothetical sequence, we may observe the changing appearance of the Saturn rings. All the great classic rings appear to break up into hundreds of small rings. And each of the narrow rings appears to be filled with yet narrower structures. Voyager 2's flight path allows scientists to make a unique study of the rings. A light sensing instrument is pointed through the rings at the star Delta Scorpii, more than 587 light years away. The amount of starlight passing through the rings is measured. The experiment finds that what appears to be hundreds of rings are waves in a sheet.